new video time guys i am yard offside fm and it is very nice to see you again this is episode 15 of the triumph my football manager 2017 let's play series as hell's teeth fc in the tuvaluan a division thanks for coming back for episode 15 guys it's the start of season three and season two went pretty well as you will remember we were crowned champions of the tuvaluan a division a great accomplishment for a club that was only created two years years ago uh, we were decisive champions in the end six points clear of our nearest competition Tofaga it looks like Luamotu also finished on 38 points but lost out on goal difference to Tofaga which is significant because it means that Tofaga qualified for the Champions League and Luamotu did not there was one final match in uh, in that last 2017 season that you guys did not see and of course I'm in the wrong year here we are uh, it was our 3-1 victory over Nauti. We went down early with Okalani scoring for the Sharks, as they are nicknamed. And uh, we managed to come back and, and perform very well in the end. Moeaga scored, Lapayo scored, and Colonna Kemtaura uh, managed to get a, an insurance goal uh, in the 90th minute, as you can see. So, um, that yeah, that left us as champions, as you guys saw. And it has put us in the OFC Champions League. And we're actually going to be taking in a little match from the Champions League today. Um, I'm very excited about it. I'm a little bit nervous. I have no idea what to expect. You know, you get used to playing a certain standard when you're in one league. And then all of a sudden, it, you, you, you have to come out of your comfort zone. And So we'll see how this goes today, guys. But before we do that, I do want to just go a little bit over some of the club's kind of history here. Uh, because we've talked a lot about, um, you know, which which games we're winning but I wanted to kind of not just cover you know we won this game we drew this game blah 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 but just like highlight some of the players and talk about their stories here so I've brought up uh, this page here from the club history screen and we're looking at players with most goals in a season you can see Samaya Moeaga but doing really well on that front for both years however James Lapayo did score more goals in the league Moeaga I know really came on during the group stage of the Independence Cup last season so Probably a lot of his goals happened in that. And thus, Lapayo was our top leading uh, goal scorer. Um, Samaya Moeaga has scored hat-tricks on numerous occasions, and you can see that there. He is, uh, I don't think, the only player to have scored a hat-trick for us. I believe Tama Faitui did it on one occasion as well. Uh, but he's the most likely in our squad to, to do that. James Lapayo led our squad in assists uh, last season, which means Lapayo is becoming a, a, a really great player on his own in both the uh, providing category and in the finishing category. Really a lethal forward. Uh, Mayo Tui Tapase um, is our best um, goalkeeper in terms of clean sheets. He kept 10 last year, so that's very nice. He also got 6 in the 2016 season, which is pretty awesome because he was only brought in halfway through, so you can really tell how, how much he came in the door and was immediately a difference maker for us. Uh, Tama Faitui has certainly dropped off where he was in 2016 at 7.55 average rating for the, for the year. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, he wasn't nearly as good uh, in 2017, and he's really uh, sort of deteriorated into more of a backup option for here in 2018. But really a club legend, and he'll still be around for a long time. Moeaga having the highest average rating last season for us. Uh, Samaya Moeaga led us last year with seven Player of the Match awards, or Man of the Match awards. Um, Imasu Sio had the worst discipline collecting five yellow cards for us last year. He's now left the club, and that's something we'll talk about when we go through transfers. And then we have uh, the youngest player ever to perform for us. This is mostly guys who came in for the regen team on regen day. Samai Moeaga uh, is our oldest player and has been pretty much since day one. Growing older by the day, he's going to be turning 32 soon, so really developing strikers for the future is definitely a priority. Our, our youngest ever goal scorer is Lua Tui, who is still with the club, uh, albeit very much as a reserve. Uh, he scored in that great uh, quarterfinal of the Christmas Cup last year against Tofaga. Oh, that was a great match. Wish I'd done that as a live com, actually. Um, and then we have some stuff about the oldest goal scorer. So, guys, you've, we, we've, we've gone through a little bit of the stories here. We've, we've talked a little bit about the sort of players who are shining for us and doing well for us historically, you know? And that's absolutely something that, that I want to continue to highlight and maybe do even better at highlighting in the future is, you know, the stories of our players. 
Um, we have had something to report in the club sort of finance world, I guess you could say. We have once again upgraded our junior coaching. It's up to adequate now, uh, which is still the best in um, in Tuvalu. However, if we look at some of the other clubs, you can see Hame and Mimi have upgraded their junior coaching. Tofaga have a ground sponsorship deal that's going to make them a fair bit of money. Um, and there's one other team, Nauti. Nauti have upgraded their, their junior coaching as well. So some other teams making some steps in terms of the, uh, the finances and the sort of club infrastructure um, department. Definitely some other clubs making strides, but we still, I think, are head of the pack in terms of that department. And to just find some confirmation of that, um, let's go to the Tofaga screen and look at clubs so that we can check out how high we've risen up in terms of the club's reputation. I believe we were last coming in at the very start of season one, and now we are up to second, having won the A division last season. Tofaga still above us, uh, but we are hot on their heels. We're also, as we always have been, doing very well in finances. We have the second highest estimated value of any team in Tuvalu. Tofaga way out in front of us, in large part due to that aforementioned um, sponsorship deal that they managed to sign. Why can't we sign one of those? That sure would be nice. Make a whole bunch of money. Hopefully we'll leave the Champions League with, with a fair bit of cash. That, that would certainly uh, be preferable. So, obviously, we've gone through the January transfer window, and we're, we've got to talk about some of these here. Uh, we've brought in four new people, but they're all, well, not all. Most of them are really, really top quality, and I'm very happy with the, the business that we've made. First and foremost, we brought in Ola Lofa Ward. Um, this guy might be the best player that we ever sign at Hell's Teeth. I'm sure not... Um, he probably won't be the best player that we ever signed in the history of this series, but he's certainly the best that we have signed so far. Uh, he's 16 years old, came in from Newtow, and his physicals are already pretty good, and they are still growing, as you can see, guys. Got some really, really, really nice mentals. He's fantastic as a shadow striker, and you can see in the preseason, he has been having some absolutely outstanding results. Guys, we did play, that reminds me, we did play six preseason matches. I'm not going to go through with them with you. They were really just for fitness. But not bragging, we did uh, come through the six-match preseason undefeated. Um, so that's something to that bodes well for this 2018 season. At any rate, Olaf Award looks like a fantastic player. He slots right into the first team, and he could be a real legend for this club for 20 years. I mean, he's so young still. Uh, then we brought in Tito Tini Lau, who's a very experienced and quite versatile player. He can play anywhere between central midfield and uh, attack. He's four and a half stars, according to my assistant. And you can see why. He's got some very, very nice physicals. Uh, he's got quite a bit of pace and acceleration. Uh, leaves a little bit to desire, be desired in terms of his technicals. But with a finishing of eight, you know, that's all right. He, he, he can do a job in there. Um, and it's definitely he's definitely not quite up there for a 26 year old you would expect his mentals to be a fair bit better uh, but at any rate teeny Lau, definitely a player who can make a difference for us and can slot in on a lot of different places in the attack finally joshua baldwin well not finally there's one more player after this uh joshua baldwin has come in he's a player who actually ginned with us during the on regen day in the 2017 season i decided to cut him because he played quite poorly uh in that uh, quarterfinal match against tofaga that i mentioned um, but I, I have brought him back. My assistant gave him a decent rating in terms of potential ability. I don't trust my assistant's star ratings quite. But, you know, looking at those physicals, he certainly is an excellent specimen. Acceleration 15, pace 14. I mean, he's the fastest player in our, in our team, without a doubt. And as I've said repeatedly, those physicals go a long way in terms of the winger department. We've also brought in Timali Tologo who is a pretty accomplished 16-year-old winger, another regen who came in, uh, another player who's got a fair bit of pace, and he's got crossing of seven, which is pretty good. It's hard to find players with cr good crossing in Tuvalu. Most of them are really terrible, five or under mostly. So to find someone with, with seven crossing, that's pretty good, and hopefully that's a technical that we can grow over time. So... Just to move on quickly, Imasu Sio has left the club for Pioneer. I tried to keep him, guys, but in the end, he decided he did want to go. I think he saw um, some of our signings as kind of threatening his place in the team. Uh, although none of these guys are defenders, so I'm, I'm a little bit baffled still as to why he thought... 
uh, he was going to get forced out. Uh, Fia Malua is now eligible to play uh, after having transferred in last year, and maybe that contributed to Sio thinking he wasn't going to see as much match time with us. Uh, we've also dropped some players that have some his- historic significance. Alphali Pattaya, Ali Nessi Salau, uh, Alatele Tiute. These were all guys who had been with the club since the start of season one, but they just were forced out of the club. They're, they're not good enough anymore, and I had to let them go just to trim down the squad for registration. Uh, then fellow Tologo never really, he's a striker, never really developed while he was with us, and Samaya Vailele is a, a winger who I took a punt on during the 2016 regen day, and he just didn't pan out. So we have released him. That's it for transfers, guys. Let's just go briefly into the uh, OFC Champions League page and check th- what's been going on. Auckland City dominated their group, Group A. Uh, the only team that even came close to them was Hana of the Solomon Islands, uh, and they didn't actually perform that well. You know, they came away with four points. Um, Port, Port Moresby, who are an increasingly good team from um, New, Papua New Guinea, uh, managed to come away with a competitive Group B. Some decent teams in here. Pirai, I believe, are of Tahiti, yes, and uh, Kune, I think, are New Caledonia. By the way, the structure of the OFC Champions League um, is basically these group stages are single round robin. They are all played at one venue, which is you know a host that's selected. It's a neutral venue, and this year it is Stad Pentecost, which is in uh, Noumea, New Caledonia. Uh, it, that's the largest city in New Caledonia, uh, and uh, so we'll be playing all these matches there. Um, so the other half of the draw has begun their matches, as you can see. Group C is kicked off with Venus and Gaicha uh, getting wins there. Um, and Hawks Bay, uh, a New Zealander team that I expect will win this group. We'll definitely give it our best shot. But we've drawn Hawks Bay, Kosa, and Oro of Papua New Guinea here. Um, we'll certainly give it a chance. I think the fact that we play Kosa and Oro in our first two matches, in our first and second match respectively, definitely bodes well, and we can maybe come into this Hawks Bay game hoping to, I don't know, park the bus for a draw. It's a, such a dream. It's We're probably going to lose even this match to Kosa. We're so far behind everybody else right now. But, um, yeah, so our opponents on the day, Kosa, they're from the Solomon Islands. Let's have a look at them here. Um, we don't have very much information about them. They are another amateur club like us, so that bodes sort of well, I guess. Um, we can have a look at the Solomon Islands page and just go through the clubs list to see. So they're fourth best in the S League. Um, Hana and Kosa. So some looks like there were some upsets last year in the Solomon Island S League as we have two teams that are really not near the top in terms of reputation. Not sure which one of them was the champion of the division. I don't think I don't think this league is playable, so I can't actually see. Um, but at any rate, yeah, that's Kosa. That's who we're going to be taking on today. It's a little hard to figure out uh, who is going to perform well. It's a little f- hard to figure out how I need to approach the match tactically. But I'm going a little more defensive just to be on the cautious side here. We'll go with the Tengako, the 3 4 2 1. Um, and we basically have our best team in here. There are a few things of note that we have to talk about. Tofi Kai Pearson, uh, he went through a pretty terrible chest injury during preseason, and so he's going to be out for a couple more weeks. Disappointing to see him miss out on the Champions League, our captain, but uh, that's how it goes. You do have to deal with those injuries, and, and uh, so he was. Certainly a martyr for us in that department. Also, Taumafai Ofati is not eligible to play in this first match. He was a transfer that came in sometime last year. I can't remember which window it was. Um, but he came in from Tofaga and last... It must have been over the summer from Tofaga. Um, because last year he played in the OFC Champions League for Tofaga. And he's picked up a ban which is carried with him into uh, his, his time with Hell's Teeth. So we'll be without him for this game. I'm hopeful that we can... Uh, can have his full services uh, against Oro in our second match. By the way, for the, we're already so far into this episode. It's so long already. Um, we'll be doing just the Kosa match in this game, and then I'm seriously considering doing a live com for the next one, so that we can do so that we can see all of the Champions League matches in a live com. But that'll depend on the result here. If we get hammered here, I may you know just decide to to just move on to the rest of the year. Um, 
and we'll watch more of the Champions League uh, after we're more competitive a few years down the road. I don't know. It's that's all long-term planning. Who who knows? So yeah, Cosa, we've talked about them. Let's get into this match here today. Wow, it's we're playing in front of two and a, two and a half thousand people. We're so used to playing in, in front of crowds of you know like two hundred people just standing around near the the airport um you know oh hey let's wander over to the tuvalu sports ground hell's teeth are playing but this is a, a proper attendance right there it's a hot day uh in here in numea in new caledonia uh, 93 degrees that's around 30 celsius uh and let's see what we know about the referees pretty lenient so we have a new tactic that's a really hard tackling tactic we may introduce it today uh depending on if we need to defend a lead or something like that um that could be useful it could be useful for us all right, let's get into the game here, guys. Um, as far as team selection, Tapase, uh, Alasana, Tusela, Vilele, the usual suspects in defense. Actually, Vilele is a new guy who's come in. He was a regen for us last year. Didn't feature much because he couldn't be registered for the A division, but we've brought him in now, and he, he's going to be an excellent player, I think, uh, the center back. Then we have Tologo, the new signing over on the right. Aliu, who's going to be taking over the captain's armband from Pearson. Fia Malua, who's, as I mentioned, is finally eligible to play. He'll be in midfield. The new signing, Tini Lau, will be in there at ball-winning midfielder. And then James Lapayo and Samaya Moeaga keeping their places in the striker positions. Lapayo a little more withdrawn. And Olaf Award, the new uh, wonder man of Hell's Teeth, will be playing as the shadow striker. All right, so apparently everybody's still lacking in match sharpness despite the blistering preseason that I had trying to get through all those matches. Um, yeah, so we are not considered the favorites, not considered anywhere near the favorites uh, with either the press or the bookmakers. Um, we'll see how we do here. Who's their key man? Uh, Akwasi something? Uh, a player who can really dominate the midfield if allowed the space. Oh, great. Well, we're going to get blown away here. We'll see what happens here, guys. Tunnel interview. I've sprung, sprung a few surprises with the team selection today. Have I? I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what's your thinking behind that? I don't think these are that surprising of team selections. Are they? I don't know. Um, Kosa are a good team and have the ability to threaten us in multiple ways. We worked on countering their threats with this particular lineup. Okay, so they're going to be lining up in a 4-4-1-1. Uh, looks like they may be going on the defensive side here, trying to resist our really potent attacking power. They've done their research. Uh, let's continue through here and get to the pep talk. Okay, so we are being considered the underdog. Maybe we should consider that in terms of this uh, team talk. Mm, go with calm. What are our options here? I don't want to tell them I'm expecting to win because I don't expect that at all. Let's let's go with show everyone what you can do. Just get in there and, and prove everybody wrong. We can do this. We can do this. Wouldn't it be great to start off our Champions League career with a smashing victory over Kosa? Just standing in the road like a deer in headlights, not expecting Hell's Teeth to come and blow them away. We're probably going to. I've, now I've jinxed it. All right, so we kick things off here. Kosa in the yellow and teal, I guess that is. We are also wearing yellow and teal, so that's kit selection dilemma. A little like the uh, Arsenal-Watford clusterfuck in the Premier League earlier this season. But uh, anyway, it looks like that's been crossed in. Tapase, first minute save. He needed to make that. We could be under the cosh here very early on. Cross from the corner comes in. Lapayo. Oh, I thought maybe we had numbers there, but no. So, uh, as I, I think I talked about Aliu taking over the captain's armband. He was named the vice captain after we dropped Pataya, by the way, who was the longtime vice captain of the club. Moeaga, Aliu. Is this our highlight? Boy, it'd be great to get in front here. Ward. Out to Aliu. Fiamalua. Teeny Lau. Ward. Oh, I thought he could play Moyaga on. He has played Moyaga on. Ah, Moyaga's shut down. And Kosa clear their lines. Alasana recycles possession for us. Tologo can dribble past his man. Instead, he's given up possession. Well, that ball has stayed with us. Moyaga will shoot that. But uh, that has... Um, that ball has hit some fan, some spectator in the head. Probably more like one of those reporters with a video camera. The, bet the shot knocked the camera out of his hands. Moagle will have to 
pay to replace the camera. I don't know what I'm talking about here, guys. Ooh, that's a deflected shot, and it's gone in. What a horrible way to go down against Kosa. Couldn't they have some gorgeous passing move and just prove why we're <sighs> such deserved minnows? Why the press, you know, doesn't like our chances? Why, could, why, did, why did they have to score a cheap deflected goal? Sigh. Bigger stadium, obviously, as you guys can see. Oh, Tusela. Christ, he shot it from, like, midfield. Tapase obviously wasn't going to save that. Ugh, Aliu over this free kick, and he scores! Aliu makes it 1-1. We've responded right away. That's absolutely outstanding from Alessi Aliu. Get in, boys. Get in. We're level. Oof. Wall didn't jump. That was a thunderbolt. Keeper had no time to react. Must have been on sighted there. We've drawn level. That was just what the doctor ordered. Here I was lamenting our chances, and Alius put us right back in this Champions League contest. That's crossed in by Lele deals with it, but only temporarily. That is a screamer that has gone over, uh, thus uh, not a screamer, one would say. Alio again gets it on target again. Wow, he almost scored two from set pieces there. Ward could have got on the end of that, but it's just barely clawed away. Tini Lau will launch that in. Fiamalua still on the ball. That's a poor ball, and it's going to be uh, taken over by Kosa. That's temporarily headed away by Tusela. we got to deal with this. Ward manages to head the ball out to uh, the halfway line. Kosa is still in possession here. Oh, another long-distance shot that just whistles wide of the right post. I don't think Tapase knew a lot about that. Oh, we are looking like the underdogs here. Lots of set pieces. Looks like the referee is giving a decent number of fouls, which is not what we expected. Thought he was going to be pretty lenient. Oh, dear. Yep. You can see he was wide open at the far post. Thought perhaps maybe he should have been ruled offside, but um, we are 2-1 down. Good cross. Hmm. Just looked over to the other side. There was no defender there. Completely unmarked. I mean, it needed to be a good cross, and it was. So, 2-1, and Kosa restore their advantage. Or can Aliu do it again? No, that one has gone high. We really need to create some chances that aren't from set pieces here. That is much is very clear to me. Fiamalua, maybe Ward can launch a counterattack here. He's got to chuck it up the field, though. There's Tologo, who's got some pace. Tries to get Moyaga on the end of that, but um, that was not a good not a good through ball. And now we are on the defensive again. That's well de dealt with by Tusela. Very much at fault for that first Kosa goal. Some good passing once again here, but that one has gone over. All right, well, we've reached halftime, only a goal down. I suppose that's something that we can be proud of. Uh, that Aliu strike was really, really something superb. Um, so, you know, it's not the worst first half. We certainly don't want to be getting into the players and uh, being too hard on them. I just remembered we do have a match in three days' time, another Champions League match, so I should probably make a substitution or two here. Some of the defenders obviously not having... Great days with a with 6.2s for Alisana and Tusela. But I'm not sure that anybody who I could bring on would do much better. Masolia Eti is an option, of course. But, you know, as I say, I don't know if he would he'd perform a whole lot better. I think we may need to find somebody who can kind of revolutionize the way we're playing in midfield, no? Hmm. Are there any good options, though? That's the next question. What if we brought on another winger? Like, what if we brought off Tologo, who's not necessarily had a great match? Lima Lofa could come on. Let's do that. Let's bring on um, Lima Lofa for Tologo and uh, see if he can perform a little better. Mr. Lima Lofa performed well at the end of last season after really taking a long time to settle in. He had some great matches for us. I remember there was a Samaya Moeaga goal that he scored with a cross that was an early cross. It was probably near the halfway line. It was just absolutely absolutely on a dime for Moeaga. So he can perform well, Fiamalua, and hopefully he can come in and help us rescue a result from this one here today. As I say, not going to you know, get into the players too much here. 
Um, there's nothing to lose today, so just go out there and give it your best shot. Player's looking relaxed, and hopefully that can translate into some composure in front of goal here. Um, certainly am hoping that we can, you know, nick a draw here, but wouldn't be that disappointing. We, right now we are still a ways behind the rest of the competition in the OFC Champions League, and we're just happy to be here. And the board, you know, have told us they're not expecting anything too uh, magical from this they're just happy that we're here being competitive uh that set piece is not dealt with well at all barely clawed away uh, that looked like that was Vilele number two finally managed to get it clear but we got to do a better job dealing with set pieces that much is absolutely certain so Kosa still in possession here Lima Lofa's dispossessed him launches it for Ward but that's not a great ball that's what I get for praising people really Okay, let's make another substitution. Looks like there could be a highlight for Kosa. Great. Okay. Uh, we should bring somebody else on. Mm, a striker, maybe? I don't know. Looks like James Lapayo has not had the best of games. Ward is on a 6.7. None of them have really played that well. Is it time to bring on Tomify Tui, perhaps? I think it might be. I think it might be. And let's... Let's bring off Ward, who's looking maybe a little overawed by the occasion. Put uh, Tui back in there. Obviously, you know, as I mentioned, a legend for the club. He's kind of dropped off a little bit, but an absolute fan favorite. And, you know, he still he did come come back into things a little bit during uh, fits and starts in the 2017 season. So hopefully he can be okay for us here today. And certainly resting Ward so that we can have him more or less at full strength for the Oro game um, in three days' time will be will be very helpful. So, Okay, Tui looking in a positive mood here. Let's see who scores for Kosa, because I think this could be their highlight. No, actually, Moeaga's won that. Lima Lofa will launch it for Lapayo. Great news. Lapayo, Tini Lao, Ward way too far out. He shoots it anyway. Not a great attempt from Ward. Needed to look to... Hold up the play and thread somebody through Alasana on a 6.1. That is very worrying, and it may be Masoli Eti time soon, because that is not good. We're still only a goal down here, mind you. You know, it's not all doom and gloom. One goal, and it's level. And we do have a highlight here, it appears. Moeaga, that is way, way, way out, and it only just missed the post. Smaya so Moeaga is looking exhausted, and we should think about subbing him. Um, oh, wow, he's on 60 condition. He does need to be taken off. Um, so Moeaga probably will have to come off eventually. Um, let's see if he can make it for another 5 or 10 minutes here because he is a great player, and I just want to see what he can do. Yellow card shown for some Kosa guy. I don't know. You know, we could maybe consider switching over to the Awendo. Why don't we? Why don't we? Because, you know, they, they're a... They're a we're still only a goal down. Should we just be happy with the goal difference? No, let's do it. Let's go for the window. Let's see if we can snatch something out of this. I'm going to take off Moeaga and bring on hmm, Tui Feoto. I love Feoto's great finishing statistics, so you never know what he can do. We're going to bring him in. Can Tui? Well, nobody can really play um, complete forward. So, uh, we'll just put Feoto there and see what he gets up to. Okay. Oh, shoot. I've forgotten to check these guys. i got to move Tini Lau over here. I suspect he's going to be much better. At least it moves uh, Fiamalua over to advanced playmaker where you can see he's a little better. He's very good at center mid-defend, though. You know, I, I, I could move Tini Lau up. I don't actually have to bring on Feoto. I am going to anyway, though. We need the striker. Okay, Feoto, go on, boy. We just need you to go out there and make a difference. This is probably going to result in us coughing up two goals in the 85th minute. But um, who knows? You know, we may have a chance here. We'll see what happens. Lima Lofa dribbles past one man. Slowly. We've given up possession, and uh, Kosa can do something now. Launch, launching it long for a man who should not be anywhere near that, but luckily Vilele has dealt with it, though it was a complicated matter. Feoto over to Tui. Aliu can find Tui. 
Can Tui do something with this? A cross that's dealt with by the goalkeeper, but we have one a corner. We scored once from set pieces already. Can we somehow drum up another? That's headed away, but we're going to retain possession. Tini Lau with it. Alasana can look for the wing. He does. Aliu crosses it across. Lapayo can have a shot. That is skied. Uh, that one drifts into the stands. Not a great attempt from James Lapayo here, but good to see that we are fashioning chances, trying to come back and do something in this match. Tapase deals with that. Looked eerily similar to the uh, goal that they had scored earlier. Was that the first or the second goal? I don't know. Uh, Fia Malua with a tackle, but uh, Kosa retained possession. We need to strip them of possession here or they're going to score. Yep, they found somebody on the left, crosses it over. Terrible finishing. They had two guys in there who really had clear-cut chances and they should have done something with it. We are lucky that it's still 2-1. And they have a deep throw-in now. Tini Lau, Fia Malua, could have a Hell's Teeth highlight here. To Sela. Vilele, Lima Lofa, we're in the 89th minute, heading into the 90th. Lapayo, Feoto, Feoto gets that on target. He is a good finisher. You got to give him that. Um, all right, so a corner. Ailey whips it in, headed away, but we still have possession. Tui on the ball. Fiamalua, got our players are looking dead here. Tini Lau, Alasana, get rid of it. Alasana, get rid of it, please. Tini Lau. Feoto looking for Aliu. We've won another corner. Hell's Teeth are in search of an equalizer here. Come on, lads. Come on. That's uh, an interesting clearance. Out for another corner. That one goes into the far post, but it's dealt with. Lapayo. We're in stoppage time now. Just whip a ball in, fellas. Tui. Lapayo on the ball, Lima Lofa. Oh, that was a little too quick for Feoto to really deal with it, but it looks like they tried to clear the ball into him, and he had a brief chance to have a shot on target. But um, looks like Tusela has committed a foul, and this is probably going to finish 2 1 here, unfortunately, for Hell's Teeth. It was a valiant performance, and there were definitely signs of hope. Uh, from the team. It looked like we kind of came into things a little bit at, in the Owendo formation. This game's not over yet, and Tui is racing down the right wing. Maybe we could have one last chance. Nope. That is tackled easily, and that should be all she wrote. Vilele with the ball at the back, looking long for Tui, but he doesn't get there. And it is 2-1. We've lost to Kosa in our first match of the Champions League, but it was a pretty good performance. Uh, my assistant says we can't fault the boys. After that, they, they did get every, give it everything they had. It was a good performance, nothing that we should be upset about. Certainly don't think the blow dryer treatment is, is called for in this case. Um, unlucky boys, it just wasn't our day. Let's go with that. Um, we, we did play very, very well against a much better team, and hopefully we can go from strength to strength now, and maybe we can get, get a result out of the Oro match. And We'll see what happens. It, it would be nice to get a point um, out of the Champions League, but if we don't, I understand. So that is going to be it for this episode, guys. Um, thanks for checking this channel out. I know this video was a little long today, so if you made it all the way, thank you very much. Uh, I have been Yard Offside FM. Please like, please subscribe, and please come back for episode 16 of The Triumph.